Hey guys, I'm going to share a recipe with you today that is one of my favorite desserts. Um, it's cheesecake. Everybody loves cheesecake, right? This one is New York style, so it doesn't have a crust and it's delicious. And you can put pretty much whatever toppings on top you want to. Um, but first, let me show you how to make it and then you can top it however you like. Okay, so now that your ingredients are all at room temperature, we're gonna go ahead and make our New York style cheesecake. You're gonna love this cheesecake because it's so thick um, and creamy and it's got a little bit of lemon juice in it so it's really got just a, such a nice taste to it. Um, so we're gonna start with our cream cheese which has been softened at room temperature. And for this cream cheese, oh dear. For this cream cheese, you're going to do two pounds worth. So two pounds worth, that's four blocks of cream cheese. I know that sounds like an insane amount, but you're just gonna have to trust me because it will be super amazing cream cheese in your cheesecake. That's three, we need one more. And then once we get our cream cheese in here, then we're gonna do the butter next, which has also been softened. Um, the butter, you're going to be using a quarter pound, which is, uh, for most boxes of butter, that'll be one stick. And I actually have a stick that I took out last night, so we're good there. And then the last one will be 16 ounces of cream cheese. So I'm gonna slide in my cream cheese. Or, sorry, not cream cheese, sour cream. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so once we have the sour cream in there, which I know seems like a strange ingredient for a cheesecake, but you're going to have to trust me on this one. Um, once we have our sour cream in there, we're going to go ahead and blend this before we add anything else. So... In, with my handy KitchenAid mixer, which I got for my birthday last year and I absolutely love. I'm just gonna turn this on. And it's so nice because your hands are free, so you can do what you need to do. Just start mixing it up. And then I usually just will periodically kind of scrape the sides and if needed, whoops, if needed, also scraping the um, beaters on the beaters if you need to do that, which yes, we definitely do. We're just gonna push all this off of here and then we'll mix again. And we wanna get this mixture nice and smooth um, before we add in the other ingredients, which would be like our eggs and lemon juice and so on. But I just want to get these chunks off of here so they'll blend well. Now the cream cheese, when you soften it, of course you want to let it sit out for a couple hours. I got it out this morning. I wish I'd left it out last night, but that would have been even softer and a little easier to blend probably. But I think this should be just fine. And I'm just going to get all that off. There we go. Okay. And we're going to turn it back on and mix it up a little more. And you want to mix until it's nice and creamy. It's telling me, get out, get out. off again it's getting a little more mushy so we're getting there it's starting to come off of the blade or the beater a little easier also so we're gonna go down here one more time mix it up and we're just about there okay let's just blend it up just a little bit more I'll clean off my spatula here there we go. Okay, 
And then once it's nice and smooth, the next thing we're going to add is our cornstarch and then our sugar, vanilla, and lemon juice. Okay. Now, of course, if I wasn't cooking for my family, I wouldn't be sticking my finger on here, but I am, so there you go. Like so. There, see it's not now it's getting creamier. Oops. I'm gonna scrape that one more time. And then in a second here, I'll start adding in the other stuff while I keep mixing this. That's what I love about this KitchenAid mixer is it does the mixing for you. You don't have to hold the bowl or anything, so you can be getting your next ingredients ready or answering your phone or surfing Facebook or whatever you want to do. All right, so next comes a little two tablespoons of cornstarch, which I'm just gonna kind of drop in there. And then I've already pre-measured one and a fourth cups of sugar. So I'm gonna add that. And then I'm gonna do some vanilla. Now for this vanilla, I have happen to have homemade vanilla. So it's a little different than you're used to seeing probably, but it will still be just as um, it's not better. So for that we're going to do one and a fourth teaspoons. So this is my one teaspoon. So first I'll put that in. And then I'm going to go down a little bit in measurement to a fourth. Put that in. And with vanilla, my theory is if you ever overfill your teaspoon and get a little too much, it's still good. In fact, sometimes it's better. So that's alright. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is a teaspoon of just some lemon juice. Now, I've heard of some people doing a little bit of lemon zest in there as well. You could do that if you want. Um, I have not done that, but I was talking to a friend at work the other day, and she said that that was something she likes to do. So there's our lemon juice. And then our last ingredient is going to be our eggs. Now, we're going to be doing... Um, these eggs that we'll just add in one at a time and I have a small bowl here just like a little souffle dish that I break the eggs into just because if you ever have a bad egg you sure don't want to waste your whole cheesecake because you got a bad egg. We get our eggs fresh from our backyard so that doesn't happen too awful often but every now and then you get one that has you know like a little blood or something in it which is normal but not really something you want to think about when you're eating something so we just do these uh, eggs in the little bowl first to make sure they look good and then toss them in but there's nothing like fresh from the farm eggs if you don't have backyard chickens boy you're missing out and it's also nice because I never run out of eggs okay I take that back not never we have occasionally had a week or two in the winter because they lay less eggs in the winter so we've had a week or two here and there in winters um, that we've had to actually buy a carton of eggs when the chickens aren't earning their keep. <laughs> but in general, it's pretty great. We really like having them. We've had them for, gosh, I don't know, probably five years now or something. We've got about nine of them in our backyard. All right, now look at that. Doesn't that look wonderful? It's nice and creamy. I'm just going to stop it for a minute so I can scrape. Ooh, wrong way, ha! Huh? I can't see my speed over there. It's on the other side of the bowl. All right, I'm just going to scrape this real quick. And we'll give it one more quick run, and I think this will be just about ready. Now, um, while you're doing this, you can be preheating your oven. Oh, dear. Um, mm, oh, that tastes good already. While you're doing this, you can be preheating your oven. You're going to cook it at three, bake it at 375. Uh, if um, your oven tends to cook fast, make sure you keep close watch on it. Um, my friend who gave me this recipe, and gave, her name's Becky, and gave me permission to put it on the blog, 
Um, she cooks it for an hour. My oven tends to cook faster, so about 40 minutes in, I start checking it like every five minutes. You wanna bake it till the top is brown. Now here's the tricky thing. When you pour it into the springform pan, which is what you wanna use if you're um, going to make a cheesecake, you're gonna get a turkey roaster pan um, and fill it with water to go halfway up the side of your springform pan. I'll take a picture of that once it's done and insert that in the video if I can. Um, but if not, it's in the blog post too. Anyway, you wanna do that <clears throat> and then um, pour your cheesecake batter into the springform pan itself. Once you've done that and you've baked it till the top is brown, then you're gonna open the oven door and turn off the oven. Let it just cool with the oven door open for about an hour. Now, if you have littles, you'll wanna make sure you put up a gate or something to keep them out of the way or pets, dogs and so on, like to stick their nose where it smells good. And um, so make sure you're watchful of that. But you let it cool for an hour, then you take it out um, and put it in the refrigerator for six hours. Once you've done that, then you can pop the springform pan. You don't wanna do it sooner. I tell you the last time I made this, I was impatient because I really wanted a piece of cheesecake. So after the one hour of letting it cool, I popped the spring form to try to cut myself a piece and it won't stay together very well. It ends up not being a very pretty piece of cheesecake. It still tasted great, but not as pretty. So you wanna refrigerate it for four hours, or six hours rather, and then you can pop the spring form pan very gently, um, making sure of course that you greased it well before you put it in the oven. Um, when you put it in the fridge, you don't need to keep it in the roaster pan, just the springform pan's fine. You can um, just pick it out of the roaster pan carefully with some hot pads and set it on a plate or something to put in the fridge so it doesn't drip all over because it'll be wet from the in the roaster pan. Um, while it's cooling, if you want, you can make some drizzle. I'll have instructions on that. In, I have instructions on that in the blog post. Usually I do strawberry. Um, and that, um, I just slice up strawberries, add a tablespoon or two of water, and then sugar, just add sugar to taste, and that makes a nice little glaze for on top. Um, otherwise, you can drizzle a little caramel on, or grate a little chocolate on top, or just eat it plain. It's really good plain too, whatever you wanna do. When you're ready to cut it, you'll cut it with some plain dental floss, not the flavored kind, just plain, and wipe the dental floss with each cut. You'll get a much nicer, smoother cut. Um, you know how sometimes when you cut things you've baked with a knife, you'll get chunks of what you baked on the knife and it makes it not a very pretty cut. The dental floss will solve that problem for you. And then you can put it on a plate, add your topping and serve it and it's amazing. So now that we've got this blended really well, I am going to go ahead and get it in the springform pan and into the oven. And um, I'll let you see when it's all done. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so you can see here, I've got my springform pan inside of my roaster pan, and I have filled it with water about halfway up the side of the springform pan. <clears throat> so now it's ready to go in the oven. You see how easy that New York style cheesecake was? That recipe's from my friend Becky, who I was roommates with in college. Shout out to Becky, thanks for letting me share it on the blog. And um, now you're ready to top it however you like. I hope that you enjoy it. If you do make it, please let me know how it turned out in the comments of the blog or YouTube or wherever you're watching this. And I'll see you next time, bye.